Hi, and welcome to the Tecumseh Soccer Club Play at Home Training Plan. My name is Ryan Madonsa. I'm the Director of Coaching with Tecumseh Soccer Club. I'm going to be walking you through this presentation. Our Play at Home Training Program was designed uh, during this time of social, social isolation and uh, uh, these uncertain times that we're in. Um, it was designed with the player, uh, parents, family, coach, in mind. Um, in, in this situation, we want to make sure we're supporting everyone the best we can. We understand our position in society uh, as a nonprofit and as a community club. Um, we understand where we fall in terms of priority uh, as an operation, but we also understand the role in which soccer plays uh, for many of our players. Uh, for many of our players, it's part of their core identity. For many of our players, it's part of their goals. For many of our players, it's a physical release and mental release. For uh, for many of our players, it's part of their the, the fabric of their socialization and their relationships. And we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to maintain the those relationships through soccer. And that's all this is meant to be. Um, we understand that uh, during this time, priorities in the household uh, are fixed on health, safety, wellness, um, economic security and that sport falls after, we're here to try to provide as structured and as easy uh, of an application and plan for you to use. And um, we're 100% open to feedback and anything we can do to help support you more, please uh, feel free to reach out at admin at TecumsehSoccerClub.com. Our play at home training plan was designed with four key objectives in mind. Uh, in addition to our four key objectives, we also include every day uh, every training day, we have a journal and reflection activity. Um, you'll notice that the journals are not, uh, how can I make my right foot better? Or how can I uh, play more like Messi or Ronaldo uh, or Sinclair? Uh, what our journals are focused on is is, is growth and open mind as a, as a person. Um, we do encourage our parents to get involved with their children, reflecting in these journals. Uh, the theme of week one this week for the three training days is gratitude. And we're 100% um, interested to hear about uh, the reflective journal entries uh, on gratitude. And as we move through the topics for each of the next six weeks, very interested to see how the players explore, um, you know, uh, their feelings about who they are and what's going on in the world. Our four key objectives um became pr pretty uh, clear to us when we designed this so priority one in everything we do is physical and mental wellness of every individual in our care uh, and we take that very seriously um, so if there is only one thing that that was done from this program it would be that physical literacy or physical activity module one which you'll see in the structure a little bit later um, in order to make sure we're getting kids up active and being healthy we know that there's a link between physical activity and mental wellness as well so we believe that, you know, a daily or at least every other day physical activity um, is going to uh, keep kids healthy physically and is also going to keep them um, a little bit more centered mentally and, and, and to help release that stress or, or, or burn off that extra extra mental energy as well. So if there's one, one priority that we wanted to focus on was that individual physical and mental wellness. The second thing is we talk about the social stimulation and belonging. So if there was a second priority, as you'll see uh, on the next slide, our, our, our main function at, as a team unit right now is to get on, get on screen once a week with your teammates and to interact once a week with your teammates in a group project. So um, the coach will be leading an online Zoom call or, or Google Hangouts. Uh, and bringing the players together in that respect, because we understand that although there's many players that, you know, have, have devices and keep in touch via Snapchat or, or, or Instagram or, or text or FaceTime, we also understand there's a lot of players, young, young players who don't in our club, and we want to make sure they still have that sense of belonging, they still have that social connection, and we understand that the main reason they play at every age in our club is to play with their friends. And uh, like I said, uh, as long as we can keep them individually uh, physically, mentally well. Uh, the second thing we want to do is to stimulate them socially and bring them together. And, uh, you know, not only in their Zoom call, but also in their group work. The third thing is when we get into the soccer element, uh, we have our technical growth and development. So we have our uh, 
every day has a technical module, whether it's built around individual ball mastery or dribbling, or it could be based on passing slash wall work. So that's when you might need a sibling uh, or a parent. Uh, you can kick the ball back and forth with your sibling or at your sibling, I've seen some kids do, um, or involve a parent or just simply with a wall. The fourth is more so for the older players, our tactical curiosity and understanding. So those are our four key objectives with our play at home program. As you know, our, it's not called our homework program. It's not called our train to be a pro program. It's our play at home program. We wanna make sure our players are are genuinely inspired and, and to play and explore. And we expect the, 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 the more performance-based players to uh, embrace this um, a little bit more eagerly, but we never wanna force this on, on any family or any individual. The process uh, and how we're gonna do that, uh, we'll develop a and distribute a weekly play at home training plan. So it's already been sent out this morning, if you're reading this, um, by your coaches and by the club. Um, that includes uh, a, a weekly structure uh, and training days. Most most weeks have, depending on your age, two, three, or four training days. With some of our high performance team has a, have a fifth bonus day that they can train. Um, that involves the physical activity, the technical activity, and then depending on what day it is, there might be a tactical activity um, and the journal reflection. In addition, there'll be weekly club-wide skills challenges, which will be put on by Coach Tony, Coach JJ, sent to the coaches, and they'll be distributed. Uh, this week, I believe we're working on the team juggling challenge, um, how many juggles you can get over a duration, um, but they're actually going to be working with other members of their team um, to encourage them and try to get their best. The third element, which I touched on before, is weekly coach classroom sessions, so via Zoom or via Google Hangouts. That's where we wanna have players come together, spend a little time together, and we welcome as many parents as we want on that call. Uh, we will be having a parent chaperone, obviously, on that call, just to help with the behavior. These kids are, are cooped up all day. We wanna make sure they're as, uh, as uh, calm and, uh, and, and as positive as possible. Uh, and the experience when they come together uh, using technology is there. Uh, the fourth uh, is the tactical studies and group work. So. Um, like I said, as, as, as we get uh, older, uh, they're going to be able to have group work that is more tactical based. Can we break them off into small groups, analyze some game film and provide feedback and report back to the team and, and or the coach. To ensure success of this program, um, we, we are very aware of the strain uh, that is on the family. And we're also very empathetic of how much time is required for young players to do this work. We understand that you're supporting them with your technology, you're supporting them with your time, you might be filming them, you might be timing them, um, and we're very grateful for that. Um, so uh, like I said, we're not here to force this upon everyone. This is here as an opportunity to play at home and to play at home together. We encourage you as a parent uh, to get involved. If you can't, don't feel comfortable on a soccer ball, do a little bit of the physical literacy with your kid. Um, you know, having that uh, shared time together um, doing some of the simple activities, some of the simple shuttle runs. It doesn't matter if you walk it, run it, jog it, um, have some fun. And uh, we'd love to see those, uh, some videos too. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, some of the journal activities, uh, that's up to you, but uh, they're lovely thought provoking questions. And uh, at a time like this, uh, week one focusing on gratitude is a, is a tremendous, tremendous topic. I'm going to walk you through kind of how every age group is structured. There's three main age groups, U6 through U9, U10 through U12, and U13 and up. Walk you through how the training plan is structured for each one. The under six or under nine, uh, we have three three main training days. Some kids may only be comfortable with two. Some, some children may have extra energy. Each training session is based on 20 minutes physical literacy, 20 minute technical play, and a five minute journal reflection at the end. First place, pretty simple, is physical literacy. The second one, if you notice, Technical play, two days out of the three are focused on dribbling. If you only do two days, please feel free to do one dribbling uh, technical module and one technical passing module. That's a module that will involve a parent, a sibling, or a wall. All our programs designed uh, for wall work, so uh, as to not burden the parent uh, during your work day if you're working remotely, uh, but want to make sure it's there. Uh, it's a very simple structure. We find with this age, you might maybe want to do only a 20 minute module every day. Um, so instead of having physical literacy and dribbling the same day, you might want to have, you know, every day we're going to do 20 minutes of an activity. 
with your child. If you want to do bonus, that, that that's okay too. But however you split it up, please feel free to send that feedback. Going into the U12, uh, pretty much the same thing, except we've layered uh, <clears throat> a fourth module of juggling. We've separated that out from the technical standpoint because at this age, we want kids getting more comfortable at juggling, and this is a great time to do so. Uh, if you'll notice also, we have the the physical literacy, and then on the Saturday, on the third day, the physical literacy is replaced by a tactical understanding session. That'll be the group work that, that the coach assigns. Um, the same thing, there's a two-to-one dribbling to passing ratio. If you do a bonus fourth session on this, please just repeat the passing technical exercise. At this age, we still have a five-minute journal reflection. It may run longer depending how comfortable your child is exploring the topic. It could vary from day to day. For 13 17s, there's four design days with an option of a coach to assign a fifth bonus day. That fifth bonus day would be a technical passing theme day. Um, as you notice, the juggling is separated again. We increase the time slot for physical training and we increase the time slot for, for technical play for a couple bonus exercise to get a little bit of a sweat out of them. At this age, we also expect that journal entries might run a little bit longer as we want more exploration and, and thought provoking questions. Um, and as you see on Saturday, they still have the tactical understanding for the group work project that will be assigned from their coach. Not included in many of these structures is, is the coach Zoom or coach Google Hangout. That will actually be uh, structured on a team by team basis. So we didn't include it in the weekly calendar. Here's how the play at home training plan summary is broken down. I'll give you the sample of this week's. we will use this week's and you don't have to worry too much about the text. You cannot see it but it's broken down, it's on two pages, and you have on page one, it starts with physical literacy, that module takes you all the way down. We've given the best description we can, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us or the coach on how to do this. We have no problem walking you through this. If you notice, our physical literacy this week starts with five minutes of jump rope. If you don't have a jump rope, that's fine. Bunny hops will do. You can do it on two legs, you can do it on one leg. Uh, in this state, go for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds, repeat five times. We've tried to do our best to make sure that we've included the rest periods in each of the activities. Then it goes into 10-minute relay races or shuttle runs. I didn't want to call them sprints at this uh, this age because, like I said, it's all different activities. We want to activate the whole body. And then the final five minutes, a chase game. If you have a parent or sibling, this is a tremendously fun game. Um, you can, you can uh, There's lots of variations with this. Once you get into it, you'll see how creative you can be. Um, the next module over is the technical play dribbling theme. So we've included some links here. Uh, the links are always going to be in red. So you'll be able to click on the link fr from the PDF and it will take you to the corresponding YouTube. Some great stuff here, especially for the young kids on intro to juggling. Bring them into three minutes free dribbling using both feet. Make sure you give your child a defined space because we want them to work on when they get too close to the edge, cutting and turning back. So I like using a rug. If you can move a coffee table off a rug, you can have your, okay, good. We're going to do free dribbling on the rug. So get some turning, changing tempo, different parts of the feet, activating that. And then there's a turning move shuttle. Again, using the same kind of equipment we used before for the uh, relay races and the physical literacy. That's the dribbling module. Then you go on to um, page two. You always have the technical play passing module. So on this, we have the wall work, again, with the video in red. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's 11 um, 11 activities, one minute each. So you're going to have to have some sort of timer for this. Um, it still has the, and it still has the dribbling. Don't be, don't be worried if the passing module has some dribbling in it. We try to bring it up to no more than 50% uh, of passing in that exercise because we still want to keep ball mastery as, as a main theme. And then the last column is always going to have the journal and reflection. If you notice, it's a little bit different. You don't read this down like you do the other ones where you say, okay, start with juggling, start with, then go to free dribbling, then go to wall work. This one is just day by day. So on day one, you'd explore the questions listed in there. In day one for gratitude, what am I grateful for today? Name three people who you are grateful for today. How can you show each person gratitude this week? And then come back to that. Did you try it? What was their reaction? How did it make you feel? These are phenomenal questions for a person of any age, for myself, for you, uh, or for our children. And it's at a time like this, I think uh, the concept of gratitude comes in uh, as more important than ever. 
uh, like I said before, Tecumseh hopes that our play at home program will inspire and instill passion for everyone. Uh, this isn't a, we're not going to turn you into a pro in 45 days. Even our, even our highest level players, uh, that's not what we're saying. There's always things we can add more to these activities. Um, and there's always things that we can modify to, to fit the enjoyment of a child. And we really want to work and on the customization with the coach and with you and support you as a family, support your, your, your son or daughter, uh, and just be there for you during this time. Uh, we're very grateful uh, for our Tecumseh soccer family. And we're, we're very grateful that you spent the time to go over the Tecumseh soccer club play at home program. We hope uh, you as a family enjoy this. We'd like to see it become a family affair. And um, thank you for your participation and thank you for your passion for our club and for our community as a whole. Feel free to give us any questions or feedback. Contact us at admin at TecumsehSoccerClub.com.